Hello. Uh, oh, do we have the thing? Yeah, yes, you can hear me. That's exciting. Uh, it will make this much more uh, useful. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd also like to say, like, most of the time when we do these talks, there's not like a lovely uh, set of water and buildings out there. So if you don't look at me and you look out the out the windows at the buildings, I'll uh, I'll understand. Like, it's uh, it's possibly more attractive uh, than than this is. So so hi, I'm I'm Monty. Uh, I am thrilled to be here. I I actually lived in Stockholm for about six months. Uh, oh God, maybe maybe eight nine years ago or something like that. There was a time when I worked for MySQL, which uh, you know, sort of sort of based in these areas. Um, and uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's nice to be back. I haven't been back since I lived here, so so sort of thrilling. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna basically just stand here and, and talk about myself uh, for uh, for a while. Um, uh, it's it's fun. It's my favorite topic, um, and I might talk about OpenStack uh, a little bit, a couple notes, uh, and I'm going to reference my thing because I'm, it, uh, clearly you can see what I'm pointing at when I point at the screen that I, I can see, so I'm going to try and stop doing that. Um, uh, the, the slides that I'm going about to show are, are online, uh, should you want to uh, go show them to your uh, you know, uh, wives or husbands or girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever at, at night, uh, or your kids, and maybe they like them. Uh, you can also tweet at me uh, if you if you really get excited. Uh, all of these slides are, are in in a Git repository. Uh, you can you can clone them. Uh, I have literally no idea what you what you would do with them, but uh, but that, you know uh, that's that's not really my uh, my decision to make. Uh, so go nuts. Um, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I work for uh, work for a company called. Red Hat. Uh, I imagine you've probably heard of them. Uh, uh, we we do Linux and, and other sorts of open source technologies. Uh, I, I work in the Office of Technology there, uh, working on a, a piece of software called Zool. I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few seconds. Uh, but it's a thing that we developed um, as part of the OpenStack project. Uh, and I also work very closely with the the Ansible team there. In fact, they're the they're the ones who uh, who recruited me and and convinced me that that Red Hat was the the next new uh, adventure. Uh, you know, shortly after they were consumed, uh, so uh, so I thought that would be um, fun. Um, I also uh, I also have been doing OpenStack for um, uh, quite some time. Uh, they tell me it's a little bit over six years now. Uh, that's terrifying, um, but uh, but it is what it is. I, I sit on basically all of the governance bodies uh, that we have, um, and uh, and I work on uh, our 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 team that that runs all of the uh, the the infrastructure. Uh, to allow the OpenStack developers to develop OpenStack. So I, I don't spend as much time developing OpenStack itself as I do uh, allowing other people to develop OpenStack uh, and also as a part of that, as we'll see in just a couple seconds, uh, that that winds up making me a, a a very large end consumer of of OpenStack. Although we've just recently gotten into the business of running it, which is also terrifying. Um, uh, so anyway, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, talk about OpenStack for a second. Uh, we will also talk about um, uh, mostly my application because that means I get to talk about myself uh, and my narcissism gets fed. Um, and uh, and and then ultimately, I would like to talk about why that's relevant to you because uh, as as, mu as wonderful as I am, uh, my my personal happiness is, is possibly not your day-to-day -day, uh, top priority. Um, I think it should be, but uh, but I'm guessing that I'll have a harder time convincing you of that. Um, so uh, so this is uh, I, I don't know how to give a talk without putting this slide in. Um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is what OpenStack looks like. Uh, I'm assuming from from the show of hands earlier that uh, that we don't really need to, to cover the the basics of uh, blah blah open source compute network storage. Uh, we've kind of kind of got that, um, but that's that doesn't do anything by itself. Uh, my my dad's a math teacher in uh, in 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 Texas, and um, uh, he's he's a pretty technical guy. Like he he bought the first you know when I was really big you know or really <laughs> really big. This is what big is. Uh, when it was really small, you know, he bought a computer for the house, and it was very exciting back then because I'm old. Um, and uh, and and so I I'm in computers because of that sort of technical literacy. Uh, this is useless to him. Uh, he he cannot he cannot do anything with this. He's like, eh, should I download that thing you're working on? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's not going to help you uh, do anything. Um, uh, so it's 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 for it's for a certain set of people, um, and it's for for people to uh, to do things right. Uh, there's there's few things that are important to me. Um, so so I, I, as an application developer, uh, I, I really like this thing called the internet. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be successful. Um, and so I would like to put applications uh, on it. 
uh, I would I would like for them to be there so that you know uh, my users and and customers and whatnot can uh, can access it um, without coming over to my house. Uh, I don't want most of the people in the world to come over to my house to use the application that I write. So the internet really helps uh, helps with that. Um, uh, I. As a, as a person deploying the software, um, I, I want to be able to deploy it to, to multiple clouds so that, a, so that a, a cloud outage turns out that uh, clouds are, are computers. Uh, even in the, in the grand new world of serverless, it turns out somewhere, somewhere down there, there's a computer. Uh, as much as they may want to tell you that there aren't, it's just magical ponies uh, all running your code. Um, you got to have a computer somewhere. Uh, but I, I want to I be able to spread my risk across, across multiple clouds, right? Because uh, even as brilliant as they are, uh, there, there are outages, and in fact, we, we know that because when, when some of the popular cloud providers go down, uh, the services that are running on top of them go down. Um, and, and then there's news stories. Nobody can watch Netflix. Um, so uh, so these, are, these are things that I would like to avoid if I can. Um, uh, and then, and then in, in, the, in the fun world of, of global business, uh, it's, it's possible you might have things that, uh, that don't want to run, that want to run in some places, that don't want to run in some places. Uh, you may want to uh, have control over where your data resides. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's exceptionally important, especially, um, uh, I think, Possibly even more more so over on on this side of the Atlantic Ocean than uh, on the side of the Atlantic Ocean where I live, where uh, well we just steal everybody's data, um, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so so the, the great news is is that all of that works today. Uh, it's actually worked for a while. Um, uh, this is this is a, a random graph uh, that is meaningless because you can't see any of the, the the actually read any of the the annotations on it. So so look lines uh, lines prove uh, success. Um, uh, the the project I work on uh, spends up uh, between uh, ten and twenty thousand VMs a day. It does that in twelve cloud regions that are spread across eight clouds, um, uh, and we do this only using the OpenStack APIs. It turns out the project I work on is the one that provides the developer resources for the OpenStack project. So we're, we're pretty hardcore about, about saying we're, we're not going to use uh, non-OpenStack APIs because it would, it would be really disingenuous, I think, of us to you know, <laughs> use something else. Uh, uh, so so we, we like to eat all of the, all of the dog food um, that we can because dog food is tasty. Uh, they make it from meat if it's good dog food, and I like meat. Um, so anyway, so this is the OpenStack info project. Uh, as I mentioned, we're the ones that, that work on the developer to and automation. Um, you can you can think of us as a large team of people uh, who who basically uh, do Jenkins, but that would be uh, incorrect because we deleted Jenkins a few months ago. Um, uh, so. Uh, uh, we have a we have a really fun uh, set of uh, challenges, um, partially due to the success that Jonathan was talking about. Uh, we have we have over two thousand developers, um, and we like we like to test all of their code. We like to make sure that it's good. Um, two thousand developers produce uh, <laughs> produce a lot of content, um, and and from that content, we've decided from from day one, like like actually like when when we when we did the first uh, commit into the Nova repository. After having pulled it from uh, from NASA, um, we 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 went through this concept of of gated commits. So we have we don't merge code. We have we have uh, robots that that merge code, and they only merge it if all of the tests pass. Um, uh, that is uh, fantastic uh, in terms of being able to ensure uh, various amounts of quality. Uh, it also means that the systems that uh, do that in support of two thousand developers worth of commits coming in uh, get to be an interesting engineering challenge. Um, in order to make it even uh, more fun, the thing that we're testing is a cloud. Uh, so, so it's it's not just a thing that I can I can sort of run in a little in a little tiny you know corner of a machine and then reuse that machine. We're we're installing kernel modules and like re reconfiguring network bridges and, and things of that nature in order to test that it that it works. So so we actually spin up um, uh, completely new machines, uh, install OpenStack on them, uh, and then delete those machines because cloud, yay, uh, uh, and. And, and we, we do that for, for every single, many, many times, for every single commit that all of those 2,000 developers uh, push up. So that, 
um, leads to a lot of test jobs uh, being run. Um, and in fact, it, it led us to invent a new, uh, a new metric um, that we've been tracking. Um, so, uh, so recently we hit uh, 2 uh, kjph, uh, which if you haven't inferred, uh, that is uh, uh, 2 uh, kilo jobs per hour. Um, so so that, is, that is how many of those that, that, we're, that we're running at the moment, which is uh, a lot when you, when you consider that each one of those takes its own VM. Um, so yay. Uh, but the neat thing is, is that our, uh, the VMs that are, that are uh, providing all of this support, uh, they, are, they are quite literally spread out uh, all over the place. We've got uh, three different uh, public clouds that we're running on top of right now. Um, and those are, the, those are the data centers that we are using, or the regions of those clouds that, that we're using. Um, uh, also, we have uh, some managed private clouds. Uh, so those are, are things that are not accessible to other people, um, but, other, but we're not running them. Uh, <laughs> so thank you to the people that are running those clouds. Uh, that's, that's very kind of you. Uh, so there's, there's folks running at the OpenStack Innovation Center in San Antonio. Uh, Blue Box, uh, uh, an IBM company, is, is, has, a, has donated a cloud to us. And also Red Hat has a, a couple clouds they're running in support of doing CI for uh, for the Triple O project. Um, we also uh, now have what I would call a full-on private cloud, uh, which is that HP donated uh, a couple of racks of hardware to the project. Um, and, and we as the sort of the uh, OpenStack Infra community have uh, decided that we would dive into the, into the fine world of running OpenStack ourselves. Uh, and so this is also integrated into that same pool of, uh, of resources that uh, uh, that our developers using. So, uh, at any given job that's that's happening uh, for our developers, the it could be running on any one of those public clouds, on any one of those managed private clouds, or on the private cloud that we run. And there is absolutely no difference to the developers, with the exception of some of the clouds have IPv6. Uh, and so when we give people a, uh, a, a, a link to stream the, the console log of the job as it's running, um, if, if it's on one of the IPv6 clouds, that developer and that developer doesn't have IPv6 at home, they're not going to have a very good time uh, streaming that console log. Um, uh, but but that sort, of sort of happens. And they should just get IPv6, and then they'd never notice. Because uh, you know, we, all, we all should get IPv6. Um, so this is a, this is a picture of uh, a portion of our system. And it's here not because it's important for you to learn all about our architecture or how many boxes I can draw on a thing uh, or, or the direction that the arrows flow. Um, but there's a, there's a specific thing that I, I want to talk here. There's three different types of, of application that, that we run in these in the cloud uh, to support this. So, so down at the bottom, uh, you can see sort of there's a cloud with clouds in it. Uh, that's, that's my sort of indication of the node pool thing I was just talking about, um, where, where we, we sort of treat all of the VMs from all of those different clouds as, as kind of one big pool of resources. Um, there's a couple of slightly larger boxes uh, up there at the top. You, can, you might be able to read from, from a distance. Uh, it says you know, Garrett and, and Zool. Um, those, are, those are sort of single machine things that do, like they're, they're big sort of beefy, I'm, a, you know, I'm an app, and I sit here and I go, um, uh, and, and there's not really more than one of them. Um, uh, and I'll talk about that uh, in just a second. And then there's, in the middle, there's some other things that are, that are more scale out, a little bit more traditional, you know, back when Web 2.0 was, uh, was a new and fancy thing, uh, and we would talk about, about scale out applications. These aren't, these aren't dynamically scaled out, right? These are, these are, we decide based on load planning that we need another one of these, right? And so we spin it up, and it doesn't take us long, but like we don't, we don't need to, to dynamically spin up or tear down uh, more or less of them. Um, and for some of that, uh, there's, there's, there's pretty good reason uh, to do that. Um, but all of these work together uh, to do the thing that's important, which is provide service to our users, right? Our, our users don't really care whether we've got a scale-out architecture or an elastic architecture for one of the components of the service. They just care that it works. Um, uh, and, and so we get to make the right engineering decisions based on, on what it is that we need to provide as to which of these is appropriate. Um, so of those, uh, uh, the, 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 the big beastie in the middle of this is the thing that we use for uh, code review and source code management. It's a, it's a tool called Garrett. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, it is could not possibly be more of a traditional enterprise Java application. Uh, it's like it de is deployed. It's a WAR file, and you and you deploy it, and it sits there, and it eats all your memory and threads, uh, and does all of the all of the traditional things that we like out of Java applications. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, it it. It is run on a on a single Nova VM uh, and cinder volume. So that's that's it. It's not it's not super exciting. Uh, it, it sits there and it behaves like a machine. Uh, it 
sadly is a service that when we have to upgrade it, there is downtime. And there is no way around that because the application itself has not been architected such that it can work uh, without that. So there's nothing we can do about it. Um, the folks upstream are luckily working on some things, um, but we are sort of at their mercy. Uh, the only way we could do that is either wait for them to fix those problems, uh, which some of them have gotten better in the last six months or so. Uh, we, we could rewrite it, but that would be like another five years of us, uh, you know, off in the corner. Uh, and I don't think that would be very useful to, to our end users. So occasionally we just announce some downtime. We're like, hey, we're going to upgrade Garrett. And he's like, ugh. Um, but that's life, right? Um, it has attached to it a scale out farm of Git replicas because it turns out when you have 2,000 developers and 20,000 VMs all cloning Git repositories, uh, cloning a Git repository is CPU intensive. Um, so, uh, so just cloning from one machine, it does not work. Uh, <laughs> that machine will be very, very sad. Um, uh, so we have a we have a scale out farm there of, of replicas to to help manage uh, that load. Uh, so this is this is a, a graph. Uh, again, it's very it's very important. Uh, uh, all of these numbers are very accurate. Uh, uh, and, 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 and great. It's really more about the shape, and I'll show you a, another graph in a second. But this is, this is a graph of the, of the incoming events uh, to Garrett that are happening. So developers uploading patches or commenting on them or, or whatnot. Um, so this is paired with a, a piece of software we wrote uh, that I mentioned earlier called NodePool. Um, NodePool is a more cloud-native application, right? Uh, and when I say cloud-native, I mean it was a purpose-built application in Python that talks to the OpenStack. It literally has no purpose in life other than to talk to cloud APIs. Like that, it doesn't do anything but sit there and make OpenStack API calls. Um, uh, and it keeps our pool of ready-to-go nodes ready. Uh, it, it makes sure that we always have things. And it, it is specifically multi-cloud aware. Um, it, our users don't care uh, that their that their you know uh, that their integration test job ran on Rackspace or on OVH. They just want it to run the integration test, right? So so this sort of abstracts that and, and keeps that for them. Um, and it is fully elastic. It, it it responds to demand. So this is the the really cool. Like everybody's like, hey, auto scaling and and whatnot. Um, this this responds to the demand of our application. Um, and so the the, the that. One on the left there is the is the graph I showed you just a couple slides ago um, of the Garrett thing. Uh, this is for the exact same time period. The graph and node pool of the available building in use and and deleting uh, build nodes in the in the node pool system. So it just it just spins up and tears things down. Uh, we can always tell when uh, when the North American East Coast has uh, awoken because all of a sudden there's a there's a whole bunch more VMs uh, being being spun up. I think largely because uh, Sean Dig, one of the Nova developers, just starts. Uh, pushing it out of patches. <laughs> um, uh, we're like, yay, Sean's awake. Uh, look, there's a thousand VMs that just got spun up. Um, but that's great. That's what we want. Uh, we want that to do. Um, uh, so talk real briefly about sort of some technologies that we use to, to accomplish this. Um, uh, our control plane um, is, uh, is, is, is mostly all in, in one cloud with some exceptions. Uh, it's also all run out of, out of Git uh, and using uh, uh, config management. Uh, for those of you who like either Puppet or Ansible, you'll be uh, thrilled to learn that we use both. Um, and there's reasons for that, but that's, this is not a talk about that. Um, so, uh, uh, so we do that. We have a, we, uh, we have the, there's a dynamic inventory module for Ansible that talks to the OpenStack API to let you know what servers we have uh, that I, I guess I wrote, um, and we use we use that um, because it turns out we don't really want to run uh, config management on machines that we don't have, um, and we do want to run it on all the machines we do have. So uh, asking our clouds which machines we have, uh, and then running config management on those machines is uh, works out mostly okay, except for the couple times when we don't want to run config management on one of the machines we do have for a minute because something's going wrong. Um, but you know, whatever. Uh, so, but all of this is in public Git. Uh, the only thing that isn't public out of this entire system uh, are, you know, secrets and keys. We, we are, we are, I guess, good enough at our jobs to know to not put our secrets and keys into public Git repositories. I suggest, uh, if that is not a practice that you've already adopted, uh, that, that you consider it. Um, uh, uh, and and we, we actually run almost all of this uh, like directly, directly continuously delivered from master. So we land a commit in any of our Git repositories on the infra side, and within within 15 minutes, there's just a thing that just rolls them out. Like that's that just goes. Um, uh, there there aren't really releases uh, in in our world, which is sad for some of the people who consume some of the tools we've written. They're like, hey, could you could you tag that repo again? I'd like to roll it out. And I'm like, oh right, yeah, no, we forgot. We just run it from master. Um, so so that's fun. Uh, 
I, I wound up having to write a, a library called, um, uh, it's called OS Client Config. Uh, if your life is going well, you probably should never know about this library directly. Uh, other things use it, and so some of the things it provides are things that, that you might uh, do, but it allows you to, um, to express um, in, a, in a config file all of the different clouds you have. Turns out I have a lot. I have accounts in 17 different clouds, so, um, so going and like sourcing another environment variables file to be able to talk to that cloud is really annoying to me. Um, I don't think it's fun. Uh, so, uh, so this allows you to do that. Also, um, OpenStack is really flexible, right? And that's awesome. It means that you can tailor uh, OpenStack to your needs, um, but it means that it opens up the, the possibility of a lot of variations in, and in some ways that, that we're working on fixing um, that may not be discoverable uh, immediately by an end user. Um, and I also find that annoying. Um, so, uh, so this library tracks some of those differences for you. It's sort of like the Band-Aid. It's like, well, okay, there's some differences here. It's not fully interoperable, but if we just tell you about them, then, then it's really easy to write programs that, that, can, that can deal with that easily. So um, uh, this is, this is uh, in use behind the Ansible modules in Upstream Ansible, uh, the Shade library that I'll talk about in a second, and also in the Python OpenStack client, uh, and, and actually the Neutron client, weirdly enough. Um, uh, but but you, can, you can use that for a lot of things generally, and we're adding... Uh, support for the same YAML config files that this uses to drive itself to some of the other SDKs. So there's, there's patches up to Go for Cloud for Go and the new JavaScript OpenStack uh, SDK uh, that are also sort of using the same config file format. So hopefully this will drive uh, more interoperability uh, across the things. This is an example um, of uh, uh, pulled from my uh, personal clouds.yaml file. Um, I, I have, those are not my actual passwords um, uh, or maybe they are <laughs> and it's the most brilliant password ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> who would imagine? Uh, uh, so, but this this allows me to say, hey, I've got you know, I've got an account on on City Cloud, I've got a cloud uh, an account on Dream Compute. Um, these are the regions, uh, and I can do things with those with those accounts, uh, sort of by name, rather than specifying those hundred config values every time I want to instantiate uh, a cloud. Um, there's a library uh, that, that came out of a combination of working on the Ansible OpenStack modules and our node pool uh, project um, uh, that we, we sort of extracted. We realized we're doing the same business logic in two different places, and that's exceptionally unpleasing. Uh, so we, we, we split that into a, a library, um, and, it, and it, it wraps all of the business logic around the different ways that clouds do things into things like create image, right? So you don't need to know whether a cloud uses Swift behind their image storage or Ceph behind their image storage or files behind their image storage and those, or, you know, are they a, a Zen shop or a whatever. You just do one thing and it'll take care of figuring out all of the stuff. Um, that is that is backing uh, the, the newer uh, uh, OpenStack modules that are in uh, the 2.0 and later releases of Ansible. Um, so this is a uh, this is a working <laughs> this would be a working playbook um, to uh, to upload uh, SSH key um, and image and then boot a server uh, in in uh, in City Cloud, uh, which would be pretty cool. Um, and that should work. Uh, I'm sure there's a bug, but you know, uh, <laughs> you put code on a slide and it's, it's going to have a bug in it. Um, it also has multi-cloud support. Uh, so if you, if you look at that, I've got, you know, multiple clouds there. I can just, I can just loop over the clouds and upload my, uh, my, my SSH key as a key pair to those clouds uh, with, with very, very small chunk of YAML, which is kind of neat when you have uh, multiple clouds or multiple cloud regions, because it turns out a cloud region is the same thing as just another cloud. Um, uh, so, so even if you're like, I only have one cloud. As soon as your cloud has more than one region, then you start to have to think about how do I manage my resources in a, in a multi-cloud environment, essentially. Um, so like I said, this is, this is built, uh, this is all sharing code with the node pool thing. Um, uh, and it's how we, we do that. There's a whole bunch of things, but I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to do the, to them in, uh, in, in terrible detail. Uh, but there's various things that we've chosen to do there that may be things you may want to think about as you're looking at your own. Um, for instance, we use a tool called Disk Image Builder. There are other image building tools if you don't like Disk Image Builder. Uh, it's one that we use that, that's from the OpenStack project. Um, but we use that to make our own base images and upload them into the cloud because uh, the base images that we get from our public cloud providers, they've been very helpful in, uh, in adding value into those images for, for their users, and, and I think that's a, a great choice that they've made. For us, that value um, isn't so much value as much as it's a whole bunch of if statements in our, in our deployment code, because we have to figure out, does this cloud change the, the login user uh, that, that you use from, from, from cloud in it? Uh, does this cloud, uh, like what, what extra little you know, daemon 
admin did they put into this one to, to manage IP addresses? And I don't want any of those things. I want all of my images to work the same so that my application across all those clouds feels like it's the same thing. Um, and it's possible depending on what you're doing that you won't need to do that. But if you get into the situation where you're like, oh my gosh, the Ubuntu image in this cloud is a little different than the Ubuntu image in this cloud, you have the power to, to, you know, to start all the way from scratch and, and do that. Uh, we pre-cache a whole bunch of things uh, which I could, I could talk about. Um, Anyway, the, the point of all of this is that OpenStack works for, for a, a, what's actually a, a pretty fairly demanding uh, and, and challenging application. Um, there's a, we've found pretty much all of the ways in which uh, doing cloud is hard uh, uh, are, the, are the ways in, in which our application has to work. Um, and we can, we can totally accomplish them in, uh, in, in OpenStack. And I said I was going to stop gesturing to my personal monitor, but I have not stopped doing that. Um, so all of this uh, begs the question of, of why, why should you care that OpenStack works really well for me? Um, uh, hopefully I'm just a proof point uh, that, that shows that no matter how uh, stupid the incoming requirements are um, that somebody's told you you can do, you, you can accomplish them. Uh, because our, ours are kind of insane and we're just the kind of people who don't back down from the insane, <laughs> the insane requirements. Um, so there's a, there's a few really important things that, that hopefully this is illustrated a little bit. Um, and, that's, and that's that you should be able to run, you know, what workloads you want to run, um, uh, where you want to run it, and you, you should be able to do business with, with people that you want to do business with, right? You shouldn't be locked into any of those things. Um, so you can run cloud native 12-factor uh, applications if that's the applications that you have. Um, Obviously, it's a cloud, so it, it should be fairly decent at running uh, cloud-native applications. Um, you can also run a traditional Java web application. So anybody that tells you that to use cloud, you have to rewrite all of your code, they're lying. Um, it's, it's a really great way for them to sell consulting services, I'm sure, um, but, but you actually don't have to. You have the applications you have, you have the business needs you have, and oftentimes your business needs aren't, please rewrite that application that's working perfectly fine. Um, it may be, run it more efficiently, uh, which we found this actually... Uh, uh, does a pretty good job of doing. You need to run something like a Kerberos server? I mean, we're not going to rewrite Kerberos to be a cloud native application. Uh, in fact, we do run a Kerberos server. Um, and it runs in the cloud, it works, runs, runs great. Uh, uh, you know, do you, we don't do this. We don't do uh, hardware video encoding or anything like that uh, in, uh, in bare metal. But, but maybe you do have that need. Um, so, so this is a thing that you can accomplish in, in OpenSAC clouds. And you can make those choices yourself. Um, where you want uh, is, is both geography and delivery model. Maybe it's important to you that you've got servers, you know, here. Uh, maybe it's not. Uh, but maybe it's important that you have servers on your own campus. Uh, uh, and, and that's the thing. So you've got both the option of public and private, but also of, of geolocation if you, if, you can, if you can use somebody else's thing. Um, it's possible that you don't want to give all of your data to the NSA. Uh, I think they would prefer it if you did, just mail it to them. Um, but, uh, uh, but maybe, maybe you, you want to play hard to get. Um, what if your customers are in Sweden um, and, and you would prefer to put your applications you know, near them uh, rather than in uh, wherever some uh, large multinational based in Seattle just decided that your server should go? Um, so. Uh, there's, there's all of these different ways to, to do it. You can run your own. Um, for me, the fact that, that all of these can fit together is a, is a really important thing. Um, but also doing business with, with, with who you want to do business with is really important because different businesses have different goals and, and different, different backgrounds and priorities. Um, and, and those may or may not align with, with where you're going or you may want to have confidence that, that they are going to, uh, to be good for, for your long-term business. So, so maybe you want to do business with somebody that has a local presence you can talk to, you can have local billing, you can, you know, you can, you can get on the phone with somebody when, when something goes, goes wrong. Maybe that is not your priority and maybe you want somebody that has you know, a, a global footprint. Um, uh, maybe, maybe you want both, because uh, we all want all, all the things all the time. Um, maybe you want to find a business partner, right, who, who can work with you on, on things. Maybe that's, maybe that's important. Uh, maybe you don't want all of those things at the same time. Uh, so uh, there's, there's a lot of companies doing this. So, so one of the other things, and Jonathan was talking about this really well, is your, your ability to find the right combination of business partner or, or people to do business with uh, is, is actually rather, rather great. There's a, there's a there's a just a a pile of different people with different options that are all all sort of fit together into this into this puzzle um, 
These are just the European public OpenStack clouds. Uh, you can go with a credit card and get yourself an account on any of these clouds and get VMs. Um, uh, there's, it turns out, a lot of them, um, uh, uh, which is uh, exceptionally cool. These are in alphabetical order, by the way. There's, there's, no, there's no preference given. Uh, we don't want to pick favorites. Um, uh, it's also entirely possible that I've missed some because I keep, I keep learning about new clouds that I didn't know about, which is fantastic. I'm missing some. Look at that. See? This is the, this is the thing. This is the, the slide of the things that I, actually, let me, let me rephrase. This, these are the OpenStack public clouds in Europe that I have an account on. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what if you want to do something in China? Uh, these are public OpenStack clouds in China. Um, uh, there, there, there are five of them. Um, and there's probably ones that I don't know about because also uh, these are the ones that I've been able to figure out how to get to the login menu <laughs> on, the, on the website. Because <laughs> um, uh, it just really comes to Chicago. I, I don't read Mandarin. Um, so, uh, which, is a, which is a really cool, uh, really cool kind of thing. So, so there's a lot of choices out there that, that, that you get to make, right? It's not about what, what some product manager or somebody else made. So ultimately, uh, through all of my babbling, and I'm, I'm drastically over time, which means I'm going to be penalized, uh, I believe, and points are going to be taken away from me. Uh, uh, hopefully, OpenStack gives, uh, gives you the power um, to, to make the choices that are right for you. Uh, that can be collaborating with other people. That can be going into the corner. That can be running your own OpenStack. That can be running using things on somebody else's. That can be doing all of those things. Um, but ultimately, it's about knowing your application and which things are, are, are good for that application and, and how, you can, how you can serve your users. Uh, uh, so in any case, uh, uh, four minutes and 26 seconds over time. Uh, thank you for listening to me babble and run my mouth.